YouTube changed video forever. With the invention of crypto, money is next. At the speed technology is growing, the future of money and securities are digital. Nine out of 10 millennials do not trust banks. The value of money relies on trust. Government debt is higher than it's ever been before. Central banks continue to print money. Fortunately, the world has a new solution. Experts predict in seven years, 10% of the world's economy will be in crypto-based assets. Today, 1 billion people have access to the financial industry. Crypto is about empowering the other 6 billion people by banking the unbanked. Do not underestimate this. Do you wish you invested in Google, Amazon, or Netflix before anyone ever knew about them? $1,000 invested in Netflix turned to over a half a million dollars. At Token Metrics, we help you find the next Netflix. Token Metrics users think differently about investing. They are early adopters looking for financial freedom. They are people who see a better world. A world without international borders. We believe in a world where everyone has access to the next financial revolution. At Token Metrics, we are creating a bridge that gets you to that revolution. We will help you make sound investments in this new world. The world's best investors do not rely on their intuition. They embrace technology and AI to invest. Token Metrics uses AI to find invisible patterns in data to help you invest and trade in crypto. In the past, we have used our data-driven system to achieve financial freedom. Now, we are giving you the keys. We created Token Metrics to be the only platform you'll ever need to make money in crypto. We give you AI and access to crypto experts at the best price. The moon is not the limit. To the moon and beyond. Disclaimer. Token Metrics Media LLC does not provide individually tailored investment advice and does not take a subscriber's or anyone's personal circumstance into consideration when discussing investments, nor is it registered as an investment advisor or broker-dealer in any jurisdiction. Information contained herein is not an offer or solicitation to buy, hold, or sell any security. The Token Metrics team has advised and invested in many blockchain companies. A complete list of their advisory roles and current holdings can be viewed here at tokenmetrics.com slash disclosures. All right, all right, crypto family, how are you? Uh, happy Thursday, hope you're all doing well. We have a 100X Advisors show, it's been a while. We have a very special guest with us. We have Peter Zhou, uh, all the way from uh, Shanghai. And in today's show, we'll be going through and doing a deep dive and asking him about VeChain. We know VeChain has been a very, very popular project with our community, and we're curious to learn more directly from the source. Peter, welcome. How are you? I'm great. I'm doing great. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, awesome. So let's start with you giving an introduction to everybody. Uh, please tell the whole world uh, who you are. Okay. So hello, everyone. I'm Peter Zhou. I'm from uh, VeChain. I'm the chief scientist. Um, I'm currently leading the blockchain dev and the research at VeChain. Um, so before I joined VeChain in 2017, um, I was a university researcher for more than 10 years. Uh, my research areas are mainly about AI, and uh, yeah, that's about me. Yeah, awesome. Welcome. Great to have you on board. So we'll be taking questions towards the end of this interview. So any questions you okay. have, please uh, just take just post questions in the chat, and we'll go through and we'll uh, pick questions. So the first question we have is. How did you get into crypto and VeChain? 
Okay. So um, I think I'm a good friend of Jay, uh, who is one of the co-founders of VeChain. So I remember um, in 2016, I was in Hong Kong and I received a call from Jay say, hey, um, it's a long time we haven't seen each other, so just come out and have a coffee. So we went out uh, for a coffee and uh, it happened. Um, our CEO, Sunny, was with him. They were on a business trip together. So we talked about uh, Bitcoin and blockchain. That was the first time I heard about it. Um, so after that, I was kind of like a curious about uh, blockchain and uh, curious about this uh, the technology behind it. So I started to learn it from myself. Um, and we met again in 2017, early 2017. And, uh, um, you know, it was sunny and we talked about VeChain, talk about the, the idea behind the project. So I was uh, super excited and fascinated about the ideas. And uh, later on, you know, I got a message from Sunny and said, hey, why not join us? Uh, we need a chief scientist. So it didn't take me too long to uh, quit my research job and join VeChain. So yeah, here, here I am. And uh, yeah. OK. Now, for those people maybe who are discovering this project for the first time, uh, please tell us a bit about VeChain and your team's vision. OK, so I think our job at VeChain is to use blockchain to solve real world problems and uh, create new business values. So our mission is to uh, pursue the mass adoption of blockchain technology so that the whole community can benefit from it. So our strategy is to work very closely with enterprises, no matter it is a Fortune 500 or a small startup, we work together um, um, to uh, solve their problems. I think that those problems are, are real, um, are um, probably most likely to be valuable. And then we work together to innovate and uh, to create business values. Eventually, our technology will help their customers um, to improve their lives, um, help, their, help their customers to benefit from the blockchain technology. Um, so, yeah, that's our strategy. So about VeChain, um, the project started, um, I think, in 2015. It's very early uh, in the crypto world. Um, I think we started by building some um, private chain-based uh, blockchain, a private, private blockchain-based uh, supply chain management solution for some companies in the luxury and fashion industry. Um, I think it's very incredible if you think about that we started doing this very long ago six years ago uh, i just give you some idea um the consulting companies like ibm they started doing the sa similar thing only a couple of years ago so we are years ahead um so after a few uh, successful projects we realized that you know um building private chain or consortium chain based solution is not what we want because first of all it's not scalable um, and also um, it couldn't realize the full potential of blockchain. So we made a very big decision, say we want to switch to a public blockchain solution. So we started to build our own public blockchain, VeChain Thor. Um, we designed at, at the very beginning, we designed our blockchain and develop our blockchain uh, for the, uh, the main purpose of you know, enterprise applications. And uh, we launched a vision for in June 30th, uh, 2018. Uh, we've also built a very interesting, you know, very powerful platform called the VeChain 2 Chain. Um, it provides, you know, APIs or even turnkey solutions for enterprise so that they can efficiently, uh, very quickly build their, um, you know, enterprise applications. And uh, it really, help enterprises to focus on their own business model rather than, you know, um, you know, got trapped in the, you know, technical difficulties. So I think our decision and the transition paid off very quickly. We, we got attention from um, PwC and BMV who sees our values, sees our potential. So 
uh, later on, they became our strategic partners and uh, investors. Okay. So uh, with their help, we have working, we have worked with hundreds of companies, including those big enterprises like uh, Walmart China, like H&M, LVMH, and uh, BMW. Um, so what I want to say is that it's not a coincidence that VeChain is positioned as the number one choice of public blockchain platform for enterprise to build decentralized applications. Everything has a reason and uh, everything has uh, has been hard earned uh, by our team. So I think VeChain is still growing. So uh, I'm pretty uh, excited and uh, looking forward to our future. Yeah, that's about VeChain. Okay, that's great. Uh... Next question we have, what's the utility of VeChain Thor public blockchain and how does it generate value for the real business world within the ecosystem? Okay, okay. I think VeChain Thor <coughs> uh, public blockchain uh, provides a, a secure, a stable and scalable uh, source of trust for enterprises and developers uh, to build and run their uh, decentralized applications. Um, as I just mentioned, the blockchain um, is tailor-made for enter enterprise applications. Uh, when we design and develop our blockchain, we keep in mind all the requirements from um, our enterprises' clients. Um, just for example, uh, we adopted uh, the proof of authority consensus to meet the requirements of security and uh, a scalability and then we uh, designed the two token systems to have to handle the uh, the volatilities of the uh, transaction costs for enterprises and we designed the protocols like uh, fee delegations uh, protocol for enterprises to be able to uh, pay a gas fee for their clients so their clients so their customers can um, use their the apps just like the way they use normal applications and we also um, put in a very um, efficient governance model so that we can handle uncertainty very efficiently and effectively. Uh, also, we have a VeChain toolchain platform uh, built up uh, so that enterprises uh, can build their applications very efficiently, uh, both in terms of time and cost. Um, it, it, it really differentiates VeChain from other, other projects. And um, I think another core value from VeChain is that our team has been working with uh, real enterprises all the day. Uh, you know, like uh, every day we're working with the real enterprises. We know their requirements. We know their uh, what they want from the blockchain. So we are uh, building. Uh, to meet their requirements. So enterprises within our ecosystem, they automatically uh, enjoy these uh, improvements. They, they enjoy the constant uh, improvement of our technology. So I think that's very important for them to stay in this ecosystem and uh, you know benefit from it. Okay, awesome. And if you're enjoying this live stream, please smash the like button, subscribe, and share this video with your crypto family. Okay, so Let's go on to the next question as we kind of get deeper into VeChain, the project. We've seen VeChain announce many new exciting enterprise level partnerships, such as the ones with Daniel Nortje from Salesforce, Walmart China, BMW, etc. What is the level of interest for VeChain's technology from large enterprise companies? And are we going to see any other new industries be included? Um, I think the, the level of interest has always been you know increasing because we have proven ourselves by uh having so many successful projects uh we build up together with uh, enterprises um i think vchain has been mentioned uh, more often um recently in the in the mainstream media and uh i think for any large uh, enterprises if they want to build uh uh, an application on the public blockchain, it's very difficult for them to ignore VeChain. Um, so regarding the industry, uh, so we have 
we actually have built so many applications in, in many industries, like uh, we, we touched food and wine industry, we touched the, uh, the uh, luxury fashion industry, we have a use case in uh, automobile and, uh, you know, a, a lot of other industries. I think that the platform, you know, the platform is not built only for one industry or two. It's built for general use of blockchain. And uh, we are, uh, you know, upgrading our tools to to meet, uh, you know, the requirement, new requirements from enterprises. I, I definitely going to. I, don't, I definitely believe we are going to see some new industries we're going to build a successful projects. Okay, great. Uh, next question we have for you. POA makes VeChain different from other public blockchains. Can you tell us more about the key features of POA and POA 2.0? Sure. I think the uh, proof of authority, or in other words, POA, is our natural choice to build up a public blockchain for enterprise applications. I think it is secure, uh, it is stable, and uh, it's, it is scale, uh, scalable. Um, another important thing is it's also environment uh, friendly. Um, so the reason we call it proof of authority is that the, the consensus uh, requires all the nodes uh, that participate in the consensus, uh, participate in the consensus process to be uh, authorized. Um, by authorized, we mean uh, they have to go through a uh, strict KYC and uh, they have to approve by the VeChain Foundation. Um, and also they need to stake a significant amount of that uh, to contribute to the, to the security of the network. I think such a setting it gives our enterprise clients a lot of certainties and the confidence they want uh, so that they can you know really uh, move their business onto a public blockchain and uh, you know uh, explore the, uh, the the use case um, so regarding POA 2.0 mm -hmm. it is a upgrade of POA it is it is the outcome of our internal research. Um, I think Dr. Ren, uh, who is a senior research scientist at VeChain, uh, Dr. Ren and I have spent a lot of time uh, in the past years on, on POA 2.0. Um, the basic idea of uh, to POA 2.0 is it adds uh, extra randomness to POA so that the security can be significantly improved. I don't think I'm going to touch a lot of technical details. So uh, I just want you to, to know that the outcome is that we are going to have uh, the transaction to be confirmed very quickly, much, and uh, we will also be able to compute, you know, the chance of getting a double spending attack in real time. I think another important feature of POH 0 is that it's going to bring us block <coughs> finality um, I think once the block is finalized, um, all the transactions included in that block is guaranteed to be safe. Um, it gives us the highest level of security guarantees and uh, <clears throat> it will be very useful for those um, projects who want a you know, very high level of security guarantee. Okay, all right, thank you. Uh, moving on to the next question here. How does the two token system VET slash VTHO work on VeChain Thor and what's the advantage of this system? Okay, I think that's a very good question. Um, <clears throat> I think the two token system really differentiates uh, VeChain from other projects. So um, back in 2017, um, when we designed our blockchain, uh, we actually saw the paradox uh, for a single cryptocurrency blockchain system like uh, Ethereum, like, like uh, Bitcoin. So the problem is that, you know, if you have only have one cryptocurrency or, or one token, um, it, it is used both as the utility to pay for transaction costs and used as the storage of value. Say um, the blockchain attracts a lot of user use it and uh, you know it generates a lot of transactions um, I think um, it is inevitable that people are going to invest and speculate on the cryptocurrency 
and uh, therefore push up its price. So when the price is up, it also pushes up the transaction cost on the blockchain. I think this kind of model is never going to work for enterprises. Um, it, you know, it will be, you know, it will be um, imaginable say, uh, okay, I join, uh, I'm going to announce, uh, you know, as an enterprise, I'm going to announce a, a, a project on VeChain and uh, suddenly I found out that the transaction cost for me to run an application on VeChain jumped like 20 or 30%. It's, it's totally unacceptable. So, that is why we came out with a two token system. So according to our design, you know, the VAT token functions as uh, the storage of value uh, or another way we call it smart money. And also, and, and while the, the, the VTHO token, which we call the VTHOR, the VTHOR token is used as utility to pay for the uh, transaction costs. So we have a, fixed supply of VAT, that is we have uh, zero inflation in the system and the VAT token represents you know, your rights to use the network resource. And by holding VAT in, in your account, the VTOR token is automatically generated uh, to represent your, your rights to use the, the VTOR so network. Um, I think when the, the VTOR token is used for, it, you know, it's paid for a transaction, 70% of them will be burned right away. They just disappeared and 30% uh, will go to the miners as reward. Uh, so with the two token system, when people are interested in VeChain and they wanna, want to uh, invest this token, they, they can go for that. Uh, while the VTOR token, you know, they can be traded for usage for, for anyone who don't, process, you know, don't have v, don't have that token so they can, you know, trade VTOR token for, for their usage of Beach and Thor. Um, I think in this way, uh, we will be able to keep the transaction cost in some reasonable range, uh, acceptable range uh, by enterprises, uh, which is one of the key requirements for them to uh, adopt a public blockchain uh, platform. Okay. All right. Thank you. So if you enjoyed this live stream, please, uh, Give it a thumbs up, like, share, retweet, post with your friends. We're going through a few last questions, then we'll get to the questions from the audience. So any questions you have for Peter, please post them in the chat. Okay, so next question we have here. Why did VeChain need to cut the base gas fee to 1% of the current level recently? Uh, I think the, the blue market have attracted a lot of new investors and uh, I think VeChain certainly is there. Um, is is uh, one of the projects they are interested in. I think, um, or guess, or I guess, a lot of them didn't realize, didn't really understand our two token systems, and uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, v VTOR token was pumped so hard, so uh, you know, the uh, the transaction cost. Uh, under on, on our blockchain is just uh, you know too high for enterprise to use, so we were forced to react um, to protect the future of this project. Um, but we don't dis we didn't just uh, you know change the gas price right away. So what we did is uh, we host uh, we carry out an all stakeholder vote um, for the for the whole community. So we give our community different options. Um, including uh, one that uh, say we don't do anything at all, so keep the gas price as it is. So I'm so proud of uh, we have uh, one of the best community in the crypto space, and uh, I think everyone cares about the project. So we got more than 70% of the votes voting for the 1% option for the best of each end. So after that, we adjusted. The, uh, the gas price in a couple of days. And uh, it really shows, you know, uh, how efficiently, um, you know, we can cope with uncertainties and advantages of the, the, the region's ecosystem we have just designed and built. All right, so uh, great answer. Next question. You recently tweeted on, on NFTs and the foundation released a paper about eNFTs. Can you tell us more about the future of eNFTs and NFTs in the VeChain Thor ecosystem? Um, sure. Um, I think NFT is, 
as yet another great application of blockchain. I think in my view, um, it is a type of digital asset created on the blockchain um, to represent ownership. Uh, it can be ownership of anything like uh, digital assets or physical assets or even the those intangible rights or privileges in the in the real world. Um, from that perspective, NFT could possibly you know touch on every aspect of our of our lives, and uh, um, which is perfectly aligned with our mission that is to pursue the mass adoption of blockchain technology. So that is why we we decided we we need to uh, put effort and build this e NFT ecosystem. Uh, once again, uh, we believe that enterprises are the uh, are the key players who can bring an NFT to the mainstream. Um, I I put a lot of reason. I, I you know in, inside paper you can read uh, why there's a very detailed analysis. So if you're interested, uh, you're welcome to you know go through the paper. So our team is working very hard to make sure that you know meeting remains. The uh, number one choice for for number one choice of the public blockchain platform for enterprises to um, to launch their NFT applications. So personally, I'm super excited and op optimistic about the future of the e NFT um, or enterprise level NFT ecosystem. So <clears throat> I, I think we are um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to soon. Uh, to upgrade our two chain platform um, to make it you know nft friendly and nft ready so once it's done enterprises can just you know core simply call the apis to deal with um, nfts on our blockchain um, secondly um, i think the foundation has just uh, approved and released a, a million dollar grant program it's going to attract a lot of developers and uh, uh, one of the focus is to you know, build the infrastructure for NFTs, and uh, we're going to see uh, developers use that money to build NFT marketplaces on, on Vision Thor. Um, and uh, lastly, I think you know to facilitate you know the trading. You know, trading is a very important aspect of NFT. is is one of the you know great things uh, you know offered by the blockchain. So we're gonna uh, you know facilitate the trading of NFT on our blockchain. So we are we decided we need to bring in um, DeFi and we're going to build a DeFi ecosystem. So um, where our team has been, you know, uh, however, we, we kind of like a lack of some some of the infrastructures. So our team has been already working on that and uh, such as, you know, we're working on an East Run asset bridge to bring more asset to to the vision store and uh, I'm, I'm hoping so that we, we will have a very vibrant DeFi ecosystem to support NFT trading. Okay, uh, thank you for that. Uh, let's now go to the next question here. We have a few more questions. Any questions you have, please just post them in the chat and we'll get to them. So VChain's 2021 outlook and long-term goals. How is VChain going to reshape the world in the next five to 10 years? Okay, I think um, <clears throat> 2021 is going to be great for VeChain. <laughs> so, um, first of all, we're going to, you know, uh, complete the um, the testing of VIP 183, uh, which is the first phase of uh, POA 2.0. I mean, there um, after the testing, the new Consensus will be put on our public block, a uh, public test net uh, first, and then later on, um, you know, we're gonna uh, ask our community to vote for the new consensus, and uh, if they approve, we're gonna upgrade the mainnet uh, consensus as well. So we will have a much better, you know, blockchain platform. Uh, uh, the second thing is, uh, you know, business-wise. Uh, we are going to continue to work closely with our partners like DNV and uh, PwC. Um, we're going to expand our business in, in 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 the market of supply chain traceability and management. That is what we are very good at at the moment. Uh, we are the leading service providers, um, and also we are 
we have been looking at new opportunities such as uh, you know like uh, NFTs, like uh, sustainability and uh, uh, environment related you know ecosystem building. So hopefully uh, we are going to see some interesting and uh, you know exciting innovative projects in the second half of 2021. I mean, for the long term, um, so in five to 10 years, um, what I can see is we're going to see a real mass <coughs> adoption of retail technology. We're going to see enterprises from different industries building their decentralized applications on retail store. Uh, and, uh, you know, once we, we have that base, we're going to see a lot of new business models developed uh, based on that. Uh, I see the, 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 there are a lot of people or a millions of people they can benefit from the applications running on VeChain Store and uh, you know improve their life. Uh, you know that's pretty aligned with our mission for the long term. Okay, so we have the last question. Then we'll get to the audience AMA. What do you think of the future of cryptocurrencies and the blockchain space? Um, I have no doubt about about crypto and blockchain. I think it's it's going to uh, fundamentally change our economy, um, change the way we work together because it it provides it provides a source of trust uh, backed by technology. Okay, and um, it's going to be a power engine for innovations. However, I do believe the crypto industry need to be more regulated. Um, you know, uh, when we talk to enterprises, especially big enterprises, they are reluctant to uh, get into this space to, to onboard a blockchain because, because of their, their concerns about regulation. So uh, we definitely need to get this industry more regulated. So then we will see uh, the real, you know, adoptions from enterprises um, and the real adoptions uh, of blockchain technology to, to be happen. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Peter, for answering those questions. Now we're taking questions from the audience. So one of the most popular questions in the chat was, when is POA 2.0 going to be launched? <laughs> okay. So I, um, so the, uh, I need to make it very clear. So POA 2.0, there, there are, there are going to be two phases. So the phase, the first phase is, uh, these two phases will be, you know, has, uh, we're putting these two phases in two VIPs or VeChain uh, improvement proposals. So that's VIP 193 and the VIP 200. So the VIP 293 is, is already being coded and uh, it has been tested on a, on a private test net. Uh, the testing is pretty, the testing has so far gone very well. And uh, we're expecting, you know, uh, by next month, um, the, we will have completed the testing. Um, after that, we're going to move, you know, as I just mentioned, we're going to upgrade it on our public test net. Um, and then we're going to wait uh, for uh, another, like, uh, a few weeks um, to see, you know, whether it, it's stable or, or see any, any problem, any small bugs we need to fix. And then we're going to, um, say we're going to ask our community to vote because uh, as we wrote in our white paper, you know, upgrading consensus is something, you know, everybody have to agree. That's a fact to everybody in the community. So we're going to host uh, all stakeholder votes for, for our community uh, to approve this new consensus. So if everything goes well, uh, we got approved. So the, uh, the main net can be upgraded in the second half of this year. Okay. Um, one of the other more popular questions is, can you talk about upcoming partnerships for VeChain? And if any are in Europe or any of the other parts of the world as well? Um, I mean, if you familiar with the business world, so we're not allowed to, you know, any new partner, any, any new partnership, they will be under NDA. So, uh, we're not, I'm not really, you know, you know, uh, you know, allowed to say anything about that, but uh, I just want you 
want you to know that we are, uh, you know, constantly talking with uh, new enterprises, new partners um, about the new opportunities. Uh, that's all I, I can say. Okay. So when you look at the crypto landscape, what projects, in your opinion, do you view as competitors? Um, I don't. And, and then how is different? I mean, how is VeChain different from the projects of US comp competition? Yeah. So as I, as I said, uh, we are, um, I don't see there's anything, any public platform, major public platform as a direct uh, competitors for VeChain for the moment. Um, if you think about, you know, uh, how many enterprises we have been working with and, uh, you know, how, how many use cases we have built on the, our blockchain, there, there, there's no other uh, blockchain, you know, is our direct competitors, but future, maybe you will see some, you know, projects there, they are doing well and uh, they're going to become uh, our direct competitors. So as I said, uh, our advantage is really because it's really like uh, we, we, uh, we got into this, play, uh, this space and uh, we focus on enterprise uh, applications very early and we are the first mover. Um, we've built a lot of things uh, upon that uh, for, for, for make it happen. And, uh, and we are working with enterprises, real enterprises uh, every day. So we got these experiences and we got real requirements from them. So we, we build our products and and the blockchain to meet their requirements. So that's really differentiate us from the other um, the blockchain platform. Okay, so here's one question people have been asking for. Where can I purchase VeChain merchandise just like your hoodie? <laughs> okay. Um, it's, I think it's, it's hard. Maybe you can go to, you know, there, there are some, um, I don't think there is an official uh, hoodies released by the VeChain Foundation. I think most of the hoodies they are uh, designed and produced by uh, community members. So you might go and check their, you know, those any like a community, you know, projects to see whether you can find any, you know, hoodies where you you have this feature. I, I, the the one I'm wearing is not for sale. It's it's produced for. Um, for the uh, company employees and, uh, you know, the team and uh, for, you know, it, uh, but, you know, if you really want one, you just please send an email to us. I think uh, we can get you one. <laughs> I think you may get thousands of emails. <laughs> 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 yeah, maybe turn those into ENFTs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool idea. I think uh, definitely we're going to try that. Okay, wow, questions are going so fast, it's hard to keep up with them. Um, you know, lots of uh, fans of VeChain, as we expected. Lots of people are talking about the project, its partnerships. Now, can you speak uh, on the kind of work you're doing with governments? Because there are lots of comments about the kind of work you're doing with governments. Um, I think... Uh, um... For government, uh, we are, you know, we work with a uh, lot of, uh, like, a, we work with our partnership, like uh, DNV and PwC. They are, you know, very specialized in, you know, consulting, providing consulting services, how people to really, you know, identify problems and, uh, you know, um, find out solutions for that. And and we are uh, back our business partners to 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 provide a technical support for them to uh, to allow them to, you know, to deliver uh, a technical solutions and their clients, including government. I think that that is the main way we work with the government. Okay, uh, that's great. Uh, let's now switch over to some personal questions. Okay. And uh, if you're enjoying this live stream, please smash the like button, subscribe, share this video with your friends, share this vi video with anybody who has an interest or is curious about VeChain, uh, let's spread the word. Okay, so the question is, tell us something that's true that almost nobody agrees with you on. Okay. 
That's a very hard problem uh, question. I think, um, mm, all right, so that, here's the one thing. So I'm actually, I think I'm actually a very shy person. Um, and uh, I kind of like afraid of like uh, talking uh, with someone, you know, talking to someone, you know, who I really don't know uh, well. So I guess that's my answer. <laughs> okay. Um, then next question, outside your family and friends, who are three people, living or dead, that have inspired you? Okay, so I think I'm going to pick three persons we are, uh, we are now familiar with. Uh, so the first person is um, it's called Nick uh, Vujicic. Vujicic, I think uh, he's an Australian. He, he was born without arms and legs, and uh, but he has such a great passion for life, and he's so optimistic about his life, and and uh, he's doing very hard to to uh, to achieve his personal goals. And I, and he gives a lot of talks to people to inspire people, um, to cheer up people. I think I, I watched um, uh, a speech, his one of his speech, and I was very inspired. Okay. And the second person, I think, is uh, uh, Albert Einstein. Um, so the thing I learned from him is that uh, I, uh, he, he taught me to be like uh, always be curious about things. I think uh, it's, that's a very important thing, especially for, for scientists, for, for any, anyone doing research. You have to you know, keep your mind open. And uh, you know to uh, really look at things and find out uh, you know the logics and the reasons we're doing, um, and uh, yeah, then you can you know get deep into the research and really uh, innovate and uh, get uh, solutions. So, um, and then the the third person is uh, Steve Jobs, and I think he's a great entrepreneur, and uh, you know he did a. Great job! Um, I, I really admire his uh, determination and uh, dedication. Um, so uh, I don't have to talk too much about him. So I really know him. <laughs> okay. Um, what are your favorite books and why? What are my favorite books? Um, I think um, I, I'm a big fan of a uh, lot of rings. Uh, the novel. Uh, I mean, it, it, there, I really like the uh, you know the imaginations that the word created within that book is fascinating. It's so complex, and you have you have different um, lines of stories, and uh, every lines you have, it's it's very you know, um, it's like when you're reading a book, you don't expect things. Uh, you know, in the next chapter, so I really like it. Okay. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to cover that we haven't had a chance to discuss? Um, yeah, I think I think uh, we've covered almost everything about VeChain. So uh, I really uh, thank you, thank you, Ian, and thank you for uh, thank you, uh, Token Matrix. Uh, you know, to give me this chance to you know to meet your community and meet our fans and to talk about VeChain. Uh, that's really that's really great. Thank you very much. Yes, likewise. Great having you here as well. Let's see if we can get a few last questions here before we wrap things up. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, people are saying they're enjoying the, the interview. If you enjoyed the interview, please smash the like button, subscribe, and share this with your friends, within anybody who's into crypto, VeChain, anything like that. Uh, so people are asking about what kind of work uh, VeChain is doing in China? Um, we are, what, of work, what kind of work? Uh, so um, our team is mainly based in China. So uh, we are doing, basically doing uh, things like uh, for, for blockchain side, dev and research. And we also have a team working on Tuochian, uh to make it, <coughs> to make it more usable, powerful for enterprises to efficiently to build their decentralized applications on VeChain Uh We also have, you know, 
we also have a team you know working closely with our partners um, to to provide like a consulting services to to companies to help them to uh, to identify their problems to to find the innovative solutions to their problems I, I think we kind of like do all kinds of things uh, in China okay um, and for those asking about the dates I think you mentioned the Kendrilly mentioned dates for POA 2.0. <laughs> Because of, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, I, I already said something about that. I think uh, we can, we, we, we will complete, you know, I, uh, my as, estimation is we're going to complete uh, testing of, you know, the first phase of POA, POA, uh, POA 2.0 uh, in June. Um, and then we're going to um, upgrade it to our test net. Um, and, and for the mainnet, it doesn't, it really, you know, out of my control. So because we're going to put on a vote for our community, so I I can't really tell you the exact date about that. Okay. Um, let me see if we can get maybe one last question here. Let's see if there's anything good. Uh, give me one second. Some people are saying it's hard to hear me. I'm not sure uh, why. If anybody else has any issues with the audio, let, let me know. But I think this is maybe just, just a few people. Uh, yeah, so people have been asking about marketing. What's the marketing plan for VeChain going forward? Um, I, first of all, I'm not a specialist. I'm, I, I'm not an uh, expert in marketing. Um, so I just said what I see. Um, so we are for marketing purpose i mean the, the the strongest marketing for me is to build really good products and a platform for enterprises to uh, to use to develop their uh, decentralized applications and and uh, i mean we uh, the, the the greatest marketing to me is that we build use cases one after one and then we build you know successful projects so that you know when these projects, you know, got exposed to the media and, and uh, people will start realizing, okay, uh, this these kind of projects are great and uh, what, what kind of like a platform they are using, what kind of technology they are using, they will find out VeChain. And, uh, um, and, and I mean, as a tech person, I think that is the best way we do marketing. But of course, we, we're going to approach, you know, we're going to do a more uh, proactive marketing uh, and really, you know, it's in our marketing team hand to, to do this stuff, to make VeChain, um, you know, more known to, to, to the world and, uh, you know, to our fans and, uh, you know, to enterprises in the world. Okay. All right. Well, it's been a pleasure having you on, Peter, uh, as usual. I definitely keep us updated on the progress of the project. We wish you the best. And then to the VeChain Army. Hope you enjoyed joining the interview. <laughs> Thank you. The uh, Thank you very much. The word with the, the community. And as we like to say, the moon is not the limit to the moon and beyond. We'll see you next yes. time. Thank you, Peter. You. Thank you, everybody. Bye.